Unchained, come on, it's the beginning of a new series, and I'm so glad that you are here. So if this is one of your first times here, I just want to introduce myself really fast. My name is Pastor Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the privilege, the absolute privilege of pastoring this fun, loving, energetic group of people called Lifeline Church. Now, if this is one of your first times here, first, second, third times here, I want to just let you know, I don't believe that you're here by accident, but I believe that God has a message of hope and encouragement and of love that he wants to speak into your life today, and that is why you are here today. If you believe that with me, say amen. Come on. It don't bother me at all if you make a little bit of noise. I'm, I'm cool with that during my message, just as a disclaimer, all right? So y'all can, can say stuff. You can be like, hey, good word. Actually, I appreciate it a little bit. So come on with it. I love it. I love it. So I also want to take a moment before I, I wrote down, I didn't want to forget, because sometimes we forget about how many people are, are joining us online right now. Many people every single week. Our online church is growing, and many of you who have been here in the last six months, you discovered us through online. So I want to take a moment and just look straight in the camera and say, Hey, everyone listening online, I am so glad that you're listening right now, and we value you, we love you, and we consider you a part of this family. So anything you hear today, it's, it's for you, and I'm so glad you're joining us from your living room or your bathroom or wherever you're at. We love you anyways. That's all right. It's all right. We can't smell it, so it's all good. Love you. <laughs> so good. So good. So if you got your Bible today, you know this this lovely thing right here. I'd love for you to turn in your Bible, if you got it, to John chapter 1. The book of John chapter 1. Not no 1st John, not no 2nd John, but John. The gospel of John chapter 1. Go ahead and turn there. Or if you've just got your smartphone with you, I'd love for you to download the YouVersion Bible app. And you could follow along in this message inside that app. You just look for the event at Lifeline Church, and all of our notes are in there. Super high tech, I know. It is crazy, we got them all there for you. And to top it all off, who got a bulletin today? Who walked in and got handed a little bulletin today? Most of you, there's a little insert inside of there, a little half sheet there with some notes on that. So you cannot not have the word right in front of you today, and they're gonna be on the screens, it's everywhere. And they're on the walls beside you. The Word of God is everywhere in your life today. So go ahead and get out those message notes. I've got some blanks I want you to fill in later. It's kind of a new thing I'm doing to get you to take some notes. Uh-huh. How y'all feel about that? Y'all feel, you're, you're, you'll get used to it. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. So John chapter 1, find the event in the Version Bible app, pull out the message notes, and let's go ahead and jump in. I've got a question for you. How many of us understand everything that you read in your Bible. Go ahead, raise your hand right now if you understand what your Bible is talking about every day. Second service is telling the truth up in here. Hey, man, first service I had like, oh, yeah, right here. I had like hands all over the place. I was like, you, you, you ain't, you're reading something. You're reading something, but it probably ain't your Bible because let's just be, let's be honest for a second. I know I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm supposed to know everything. <laughs> oh, look, man, you guys are so nice. That's why I love to pastor you. I love it here because you guys are so forgiving and gracious. But I feel like it's common that we walk into a place like this, a church, and we, you know, we, we put down our button up, button up, and we, you know, wear our nice shoes, and we're like, okay, I'm going to show up to church, and yep, oh, I got my Bible with me, and I know, I, I know what I'm talking about, and I know what I'm doing, and I, and we, we feel like pressure to know everything. You don't have to raise your hand. But sometimes we walk into religious settings and we feel like we need to have all of our answers dialed in. And I'm not allowed to have any problems. And I'm especially not allowed to not understand what my Bible might be saying to me. That's a problem. I, I think that's the problem, is that we feel like we have to know. We have to know. But here's my question to you. What do we do when we run into those passages in scripture that just don't add up. Come on, you, you know you've, you know you, I got, I got a taker, but I'm going to go ahead and walk us through it. When we, when we run into those scriptures, which is common, I, what I want to do today is to help us to come under the authority of the Bible and accept it for ourselves, because that happens to all of us when the Bible doesn't line up with what we've experienced, for example. 
You ever read something and it doesn't line up with what you've experienced? Oh, here's one. How about you read something in your Bible and it doesn't line up with the way you feel at the moment? Happens to me all the time. Can I just be honest with you? This, this book right here challenges me pretty much at every level, psychologically, physically, emotionally. It's always telling me to do stuff I don't want to do. Y- y'all are holy, though, so it's all good. Y- you'll just bear with me, I guess. Today we're starting a series called Unchained. Unchained. It's all about the Word of God, and it's based out of this scripture right here, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. This is Paul talking to his disciple Timothy. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the Word of God cannot be chained. You know what he's saying? That even though my circumstances have me chained up, even though I'm sitting in a literal prison, because I have aligned myself with this Word, there is no chain that can bind me, no matter what is raining like in my life, no matter if those flood waters are rising, I've aligned myself with the word of God because it can never be chained. So if I'm under this, I will never be chained. Not by, no, not by no trouble, not by no circumstance, not by no breakup, not by no losing my job, by nothing. I'm good. I'm just good. That's what Paul is saying is that because I'm, I'm here, because I'm in this word, I am unchained. I am unchained because the word of God is never chained. Mm, I love that so much. But many people go with the feelings. It's natural. We go with the feelings. We go with our gut. We go with the logic, the experience. But there's a problem with that too. You know, there's, there's a lot of things like I explained that go against the Bible that just come from in here. They just bubble up. You know, I, I'm in love. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I, I don't feel like doing certain things, and I feel like doing certain things that this doesn't say. So many of us, this goes for believers, people who have been sitting in churches for years, and this goes especially for people who are unchurched and unsaved, and I want to let you know if that's you here today, you are so welcome here. I would love to just talk with you about this. Love to. When we, when we go with our experience and our logic, there's a problem with that. When we go against the word for what we feel is right, sooner or later, it will lead to pain. It will lead to pain, spiritual deafness, and eventually total separation from God. To make matters worse, we are constantly pressured into placing our confidence in methods and strategies prescribed by our culture rather than God's word. In every realm of life, relationships, money, business, you name it, there's a way that seems right, and then the Bible seems to tell us to do it the other way. What is up with that? So when I got saved, I was an adult already. Okay, I did not grow up in church. I did not grow up going to church or hearing Bible verses. I think I stopped in at a church every once in a while. But, but when I was an adult already, 21 years old, by the time I got saved, everything I read in here was opposite from the way I was living my life. Everything was different. It was absolutely crazy. Like the Bible says to do it one way, and then every instinct inside of me wants to do it a different way. Relationships. Let, let, me, let me just explain it to you like this. Relationships. You mean to tell me, you mean to sit there and tell me I'm supposed to marry a girl I haven't even lived with yet? That's crazy. First service thought that was funny. You guys are like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I get that. That's right. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to marry a girl, how many kids are in here, that I haven't even been sleeping with yet? That's crazy. The Bible tells me to do that, but our culture would say, that's dumb. Don't do that. What if you don't like it? you see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? The Bible tells us to do it one way, and then every instinct inside of us says, no, that can't be right. Let's talk about a different way. Money. You mean to tell me, you mean to sit there and explain to me that I'm supposed to give a tenth of my hard-earned money to this church? That Look at that. They got lights, and they got instruments, and they got stuff. They don't need, I need this. That don't seem right. That's crazy. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to do that? That don't seem right at all. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about friendships. Friendships. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to forgive them for stabbing me in the back? You mean to tell me when they slap me across the face, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek? That seems crazy. See, when I was growing up, um, I think I was 10, maybe 11 years old, my grandma Libby, Grandma Elizabeth, 
got me my first King James Bible. You know, it looked just like this. It had a big KJV right on the front. And, you know, I'm 10 or 11 years old. So, so what do you do when you get a new Bible? You never read your Bible before. What do you do? You jump to the end and you read Revelation in the King James Bible. And you're 10 years old and you start reading about dragons and prostitutes. Has anyone ever read the book of Revelation in the King James Bible? It's wild, yo. It is like a... Man, it's a sl- I'm, I was going like, yeah, this is awesome. This is so cool. Christianity rocks. It's like there's a, there's a prostitute there, and there's like stuff coming out of her mouth, and then there's a dragon, but then you're going to kill the dragon. I was like, dang, this book is crazy. This book is crazy. Come on, maybe I'm the only one, but when I first started reading this book, it just fe- it felt like everything was off. Everything was off. It was just there, all that to say. That there's a lot of things that even as we progress in our faith, even as we read the Bible more, there's a lot of things that at face value don't seem right. There's a lot of things that at face value don't seem right. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So I hope you're in John 1. I hope you're in John 1. It's at times like these when we face scriptures like that, that we consider not just what's being said, but who said it. I think that helps us come to terms with what we're supposed to do with what we read. So in John 1... Let's read this, starting in verse 1. Here we go. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. What happened right there? The Word got personified. The Word of God got turned into a person, personified. That's what that means. He. So he was talking about the Word, and now it said he was in the beginning with God. So are we talking about a book, or are we talking about a person? Let me go on. Thank you. Let me, let me go on. You must have been in first service. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. Next, now it's like always talking about the person. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So let's jump to verse 14. If we weren't clear already, this is what it says. So the word became human. The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. In case you weren't clear, the word is Jesus Christ. The word is Jesus Christ. The word is logos in the Greek, with that word being used, logos. It's not logos. Check your Greek out. Okay, it's logos. So don't let me hear you saying it like that. It's, it's logos. And what that word means, translated word, it means the expression, the content, the full manifestation. So like my message, my, my sermon, you know, it's on my, it's on my tablet. It's, it's made with words, but the, but the heart of it is the logos. What I want you to have, the understanding, the, the idea is the Logos. So what's being said here is God's heart, the Father's heart, became human. His content, the full expression of God's love for us, became human, a.k.a. the Word. The Word. See, God's words are different than our words. We use words like just as filler. You know, we're feeling awkward, and I'll just start saying words. Who knows what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the weather. I'm talking about this, that, and the other thing. I'll just start talking. You know, none of you have ever felt that way before. You're in an uncomfortable conversation. You're like, blah, 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 And just words flowing out my mouth. But God's not like that. God's not frivolous with his words. Because God's words happen. Whatever he says. When he says, let there be light, guess what? There is, and it's good. When God says, let there be land and water and everything else, it's done, and it's good. So when he speaks, it's his heart. Everything he speaks is his heart. We can't all say the same thing for ourselves, but this is another message. We're made in his image. That means our words have power like his does. So we should be more careful about our words. But like I said, another message for another day. There's plenty of meat and potatoes to go through in this. Jesus is the Father's content, his message, the full expression of the Father's heart for all humanity. He is God. He is God. To agree with God's word is to agree with God. To disagree with God's word is to disagree with God. In today's culture, submitting to God's word over the pressure of society, I'm not going to lie to you, it's hard to do. It's not like it used to be easy and and now it's hard. It's always been hard. But there's a growing pressure in our society and in our culture that tells us a way that seems right. 
I explained some of them to you in relationships, in money, in finance, in, in friends. You know, the way we're supposed to go, there are so many opinions. There are so many opinions out there. And then we come up with, here's a fun one, our truth. I just, you know, I got to hone in on my truth. And then I got my truth, you got your truth, and she got her truth, and you got your truth. And next thing you know, we got all these different truths, and none of them line up. It's crazy, and it makes life a little difficult. That's why God didn't set it up that way. God set it up for be one way, one truth, one life. And that's what we need to understand. I want to show you how to let God's word be the final authority in your life. Final authority in your life. So this is where you got your bulletins. I got three blanks for you. They're very cool. So go ahead and take out those notes. Get your pencil out. Get ready for this. This is my first thing that I believe will help you. Read God's word regularly. Read God's word regularly. Because why? Because you can't submit to what you don't know anything about. (laughs) Right? Hey, you didn't do what I told you to do. You never told me to do that. Oh, that's right. You can't hold anybody accountable for something you never said, and you can't do what someone's asked you to do if you don't know what they told you to do. You cannot submit to what you don't know. So the first step is very easy. Just start reading it. Just start reading. Look at this. In Joshua 1.8, this is what God says to a man named Joshua. He wants him to be prosperous, and he wants him to be successful, and this is what God tells him to do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. And he did not mean like, um, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. You're all impressed that I can even balance like this in front of y'all. But he did not mean meditate like that. He meant meditate. That Hebrew word is like to mumble, to say these words. Recite these words to yourself. I'll rejoice in the Lord always, and I'm going to rejoice again, and I will see power when the Holy Spirit come, comes upon me, and I'll trust in the Lord with all my heart. And while I'm driving to work, while I'm driving to church, while I'm driving anywhere, well, while I'm driving most of the time, when I'm stand, when I'm b- about before I'm about to preach, I need to meditate on these words, and I need to coach myself up in them. That's what God is telling Joshua to do. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to do everything written in it because you can't do everything written in it if you don't know what's written in it. It's not, like, crazy complicated. You can't do what you don't know anything about. And this is my favorite part. Don't forget about this. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Anybody want to prosper and succeed in all you do? Anybody? Do I got any takers that want to prosper and succeed in everything they do? Meditate on God's word daily. Amen. We'll see you next week. Enjoy your pancakes. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, that's pretty good stuff. Somebody's like, yeah, short sermons. I love them. But we're almost, we're almost there. God clearly tells Joshua here, you can't be sure you're obeying it if you don't know what it's saying. Listen to this. I've encapsulated this this way. There are areas of your life that are being held back simply because you don't know God has a better way for you. God has a better way for you in certain areas of your life. There may be an area of your life right now that's being held back just because you don't even know God has a better way. I didn't even know that. I didn't know he wanted me to do that. But if you would just know that he wanted you to do that, you could start stepping out and seeing, wow, this is better. There's areas of your life that may be held back simply because you don't know God has a better way for you. I'll say amen to myself on that, man. That was good right there. Then, after that, after you read God's word, you have to go to this next part, which is to, in your bulletin, accept God's word as being true. Because it's one thing to read it, and it's another thing to decide in advance. Say, you know what? I'm going to accept this. I'm going to accept this as being true. And this is, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. We want to accept God's word. Many people treat God's word as a book of advice that they can take or leave bits and pieces of it rather than the never-changing truth. But listen to this. I love this scripture right here. I found it when I was getting prepared, and I think it's my new favorite verse. I think this verse right here is my new favorite verse. Listen to it. Here it go. Jeremiah 15, 16. When I discovered your words, say it with me, I devoured them. Say it louder. I devoured them. Because you know why I like that? Because it's talking about God's word like a good meal. And you can't tell because I'm wearing a little baggy shirt. But I love a good meal like mm, halibut tacos. Your word is like halibut tacos Mm, with with the breaded halibut that's deep fried. Mm, With the homemade mango jalapeno salsa. Mm, your word is like that sriracha mayonnaise that just goes on it and then makes it that little. Mm, mm. Your word is so good, I was like, I'm nom, 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 nom. I love it. Mm, I'm hungry for it. And I'm going to eat it whole and take all the consequences of eating it that way. 
That's what Jeremiah was saying. I, I discovered your word, and I just gobbled it up. I just ate it. I took it in. I accepted it. I accepted it. I didn't just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, those, are, those look like good fish tacos over there. No, I, I took them in. So what we got to do with God's word is not just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. No, we got to take it in. We want to ingest God's word. We want to eat it whole. Don't even, you, yeah, you could chew it. Yeah, that's, that parable doesn't work. You want to chew it up too, but you want to just take it in. If, I'm, if I make a mistake, I want to be because I, I took on God's word too hard rather than not enough. I think right there, that, that could be something that some of us need to grow in. And we, we look at God's word and go, well, I don't know. I don't think that works for me right there. They, that's not my life. Let me just, I'm not going to highlight that part. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next part, you know, and, and find a part that works for me. I'm going to highlight that instead of accepting everything that God has for me. I love that passage because it, it makes me hungry. <laughs> Second service, you got it good because you're about ready to go to lunch, so you can go ahead and satisfy that. But listen to this. Listen to this statement. If we believe only what we understand about God's word, then it's not God's word we're submitted to. It's our own understanding. And that's a big deal. And that's what most people do. I understand this, and I agree with it, but I don't understand that, so I'm not going to agree with it. So what's happening there is very subtle. What's happening there is I've elevated my mind and my understanding. That's my authority. I, I trust my understanding, not his word. Did you know that the, the Bible talked about the world being a sphere while everybody still thought the world was flat? The Bible knows things that we just don't know. The Bible foresees the future, you know. So we can trust this word, God's word, to know best for us. Absolutely. So we don't want to make our understanding our new God. So we can just take, we can have a book like this and we can read it. But if we only take what we understand and, and apply what we, what we like, then it's our own preference that we're elevating above the full counsel of God. And that's a dangerous place to be. I don't want to be there. Here's the third thing. Let me get at you. Practice God's word in real life. That's number three. The third blank for you is practice God's word in real life. And this is where the rubber meets the road. If we accept God's word but never put it into practice, then we miss the blessing that comes from walking in step with God. I don't want to miss God's blessing. You know, I, I don't want to just pl play the part of like your do-good Christian and not even really have the full blessing and benefit of walking in step with God. I want to I wanna read God's word. I want to accept it as truth, but then I want to put it into practice because that's when I have a house that's built that can stand against any storm. That's when I can be like Paul, in prison, in jail, in shackles, and going, I'm good. You got, there's nothing you could take from me. There is nothing you could take from me because my soul is secure in my Savior. I don't care. They could take this building away. They could take all of our funds away. They could, they could outlaw church. I don't even care. You know why? We're still going to meet together, and I'm still going to be submitted to this word right here. So I'm good. I'm good. That's why I don't get too worked up about the stuff that I see. And, you know, there's more and more oppression for the church all the time. I don't get worked up about that. Like we're the first culture that got oppressed from not having our Bible. Please, please. When we submit ourselves to this word, there, there's nothing that can stand against us. There's, there's nothing that can take you down. But, it's, but it comes from reading it, accepting it, and putting it into practice in your life, which is not, it does not happen overnight. Let's read this passage right here, Matthew 7. Matthew 7, this is Jesus talking to you. Jesus talking to you. He's giving you some advice here, but it's more than advice. It's God's word. It's God's heart. It's God's content, his will. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, that is to put it into practice, is wise like a person who builds his house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. He says that when you build your life on my words, there's no rain, there's no storm, there's no flood, there's no breakup, there's no loss of a job, there's no sickness that will ever tear you down. When you build your life on this word, but let me tell you something else. You don't build a house in a day. You don't build a life in a day. It's important for us to remember that too. Some of us read a passage like this, and you're going through something right now, so you're like, I put my life on your rock, you know, please save me. But, you know, we, we, we got to, building a house takes time. 
and it makes, it takes consistency. It takes one step in front of the other. I want to build this house. It means I got I to gotta build the wall. I got to lay the foundation. I got to put the walls up. I got to put the drywall and then the trusses and then the roof. It takes time. We want to build our life on his word, and it does. It takes some time. So we don't, that's why we don't, you know, when people come to this church and, you know, they, they, they put on this face like they have to have it all together, and we go, no, 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 no. It's one step at a time. We got next steps for you. You don't have to have it all together. It'll take you some time to have it all together. I, of all people, know that. I had to get my stuff together just like anybody else. A lot of people don't know this is my first church that I started coming to. And I was, a, I was kind of a mess when I got here. I was kind of a mess. Thank God the, the leaders and the pastors took time with me, cared about me, and didn't expect perfection in the first week or month or even year. Praise God. There was next steps. They said, hey, I'd love for you to come to this group. Okay. Hey, I'd love for you to check this out. Okay. I just put one foot in front of the other. I started serving. I started doing this. So we understand that. So we got some next steps too. Serving at your church. Maybe that's your next step is serving at your church. You know, go through growth track after the service today. It's step one. It's perfect for you. You know, you, you will. When you know God's will for you, when you know God's plan for you and how you're designed, it really unlocks some things in your life and gives some purpose to your life. I would encourage all of you to try that. Maybe your next step is plugging into one of our life groups. See, in Hebrews, the Bible talks about to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And a lot of people think, that, well, that's just Sunday morning church. But you know what else that means? Having Christian friends. <laughs> that means hanging out with them. That means getting together with groups of people that actually can share your faith with you, encourage you when you're down, pray for you when you're going through stuff, and celebrate with you when you're winning. That's, that's a huge part of your faith. Never forget about that. And for some of you, that could be your very next step. You could sign up for one of our life groups. Maybe your next step is to really start going deeper in this thing. We got equip nights here on Wednesday nights where we got classes of all kinds, discipleship classes, um, teaching you about all different kinds of things. Maybe that's your next step is to go through one of those. But listen, the ultimate form of accepting the authority of God's word is not saying amen on Sunday. It's putting it practice in your life on Monday. That's the ultimate expression. So I love it when, you know, a lot of people show up to church and they're going, ooh, amen, ooh, you're so funny. Yeah, I like it. Woohoo, I like it, cool. But on Monday, are you putting it into practice in your life? Are you waking up before work and man, getting a chapter or two in there and saying, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept this. It's not saying amen on Sunday that does it. It's putting it into practice in your life on Monday that gets it done. See, I got this weather channel umbrella here look at this did you know that the weather channel has umbrellas that's crazy right anyways the word of god is a lot like this umbrella we look at it and if you've never seen an umbrella before i don't know where you're from but you know we this is an umbrella you're looking at it you're examining it the first thing you do is you look at the word of god and you're like what the heck is this it looks like it's got a handle okay that's cool it looks like it's got like a stabby so if somebody's trying to attack me i can stab somebody with it okay we don't always understand right away what the word of god is trying to say but it looks like it has something else too oh snap what the heck is that Okay, so we're starting to get to know this thing. We're starting to get to know what the Bible says about us. Then we're like, put it into practice in our life and goes, holy smokes, what the heck happened there? This is crazy. And then we're like, hey, look, guys, I got a, I got a word of God here. I got a Bible. I'm reading it. Put them into practice. But when the rain comes, it doesn't work when it's out here. And it doesn't work when you only use it to cover someone else. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh, you know the Bible says this about your life. No, that's not the way it works. It works when you come under its authority for yourself. That's when you're covered from the elements of life, was when you come underneath the authority of the word of God in your life. That's when it protects you from the hail. That's when it protects you from the rain. And you know what? We don't, we don't go like this and try and be like, oh, yeah, well, this is for you. Go ahead and get under that. No, we invite people. Come on up here. Come on up. Yeah, I mean, come on. We invite people. We invite people to join us with us. So I don't, I don't put her, this is my wife, Tiffany, I don't put her under the authority of the Bible as if it's for you and not me. I invite people to join this journey with me. Watch, this is covering me, so let's. Let's go for a walk in the rain, baby. All right, you can go. <laughs> you can go. Yeah, give her a hand. Come on. Always clap people down when they come up. It's the best thing to do. So 
The Word of God is a lot like that umbrella. We want to come underneath its authority, and that's when it provides the protection that we all want. But coming underneath the authority of God's Word is not all fun and games. Um, it's actually very serious. It's very serious, and it's heartbreaking. And when I've been in the business long enough, um, I call it that just, just for slang, but I'm also in recovery too, so I've seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of men and women start doing things, and then they go out, and some have died. And some have, um, you know, lost their whole families, and some have lost everything all over again. Um, so when we when we choose to not submit to God's word, it can be extremely devastating, not just for our life, but for the lives of the people around us, our families. Um, some of you might remember uh, in 2013, uh, there was an accident, a car accident here in Lodi, on the corner of Ham and Vine Street. If you didn't live here at that time, it was a horrific day. Pretty much everything stopped that day. All the churches stopped um, and just, it was so tragic and so devastating. Um, and it went a little bit like this. There was a, there was a man who, who was drinking and he, I can only imagine, um, but I, I come from a sinful background so I can, I can identify a little bit with some of the choices that he made, but I can, I can imagine and it seems like he said to himself, you know, it'll probably be fine. Everything will probably be fine. I don't think he, he wanted to die that day. He didn't. I don't think he wanted to. Anyways, he probably in his mind thought, you know, I'll just, I'll just get in my car. I need to go somewhere, so it'll probably be fine. And then he ran that first stop sign. And then here comes another one. The light turned yellow. He was still a far ways off. But he thought to himself, you know, I've, nothing happened last time. I could probably get through this light, too. And then, bam, he smashed into a car filled with a family. Following are the names of the people who died. 30-year-old Louis Miranda, 31-year-old Vivian Rodriguez, 11-year-old Irving Miranda, 5-year-old Jose Miranda, and 4-year-old Stephanie Miranda all lost their lives that day, excuse me. Um, choosing to ignore stop signs seems faster, seems more efficient, seems funner. Probably nothing will happen until you T-bone a family in their car. Choosing to ignore God's word seems to make life easier, more efficient, and even more fun. But in the long run, it causes so much pain. So much pain, not just for your life, for your family, people who care about you, who love you. And ultimately, when that day comes, your Father in heaven who loves you so much and just, he just loves you more than any earthly father ever could. Your heavenly Father, I get the picture that he just runs after you. He runs right towards you and he picks you up in his arms and he swings you around and he's got a big smile on his face and he's laughing because he loves you so much, he runs after you. Some of you have never experienced a father like that. That's the way your father feels about you. That's the way he cares about you. That's why his words are here. It's not to oppress you. It's because he loves you and he wants you to be well. And he wants you to do good and he wants you to be with him. And he just loves you. That's what we miss sometimes. We miss that these words are not just, not just things to obey so we can pass some test so that we can go to heaven because we pass some test. It's because he loves you so much. He loves you more than more than I, I could even explain. This is what I'm asking for you to do today. To choose to agree with and submit God's word. Even if it seems like it's just slowing you down. Even if you think everything will be fine. Even if you think, even if you don't understand it all the way. Maybe there's something in your life right now that you know doesn't line up with God's word. Choose right now to agree with God's word. Let God's word be the final authority in your life. Choose to let God's word be that umbrella over you, to be that covering over you, to be the thing, to be the person that has your best interest in mind truly, even if you don't understand what he's trying to say to you right now, and if you don't understand, why do you want me to stop doing that? Why do you want me to start doing that? Know that he loves you. Trust that he loves you. My bottom line is this. If you will allow, if and this goes for Christians, 
And this goes for non-Christians, this goes for church people, this goes for unchurched people, I don't care who you are listening. This goes for every single person. This goes for me. If you will allow God's word to be the final authority in your life, you will find freedom and breakthrough that this world could never give you. This world could never give you the kind of freedom and breakthrough that your father wants to give you. Because it's not all doom and gloom either. What blessings might be on the other side of you choosing to agree with God's word? What if? What if? What if saving my sexuality for marriage really is more satisfying? What if? What if giving faithfully and being generous really is more of a blessing than trying to do it all myself? What if forgiving those who hurt you is the real way to restore your own heart? What if? What if heaven and hell are real? And the only way to see our Father in heaven is through his Son and through finally and fully giving our lives to Jesus Christ. What if heaven and hell are real? And what if that day for you is coming sooner than you think? I, I want you to be covered. I want you to be ready. Because I just want you to know his love. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, um, thank you for your word. Thank you for your words to us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your lavish, extravagant unexplainable, unimaginable, reckless. How many words can I use to describe what your love is like? I cannot explain it, but I know I'm thankful for it. I know I'm grateful for it. Your love goes beyond anything I can understand, Lord, and I pray for open hearts and minds today. Everybody listening, everybody listening, that we would know your love and begin to, dare I say, feel your love in this place today that we would begin to experience your presence in our life and feel your love, know your love, understand your love, that we begin to trust that you love us, accept that you love us, and begin to believe in you the way you've always intended us to, to walk in step with you. Lord, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss a life with you. It's not funner, it's not better, it's not easier. No, you've shown me that walking with you is more relieving and better, more satisfying than anything this world has to offer. And I pray that understanding and that wisdom would, would penetrate every heart today, every mind today, that we would truly, finally, and fully give our lives to you. I want to speak to two groups of people with our heads down and our eyes closed. First group of people, maybe you used to be close like that with God. Maybe you used to have a close, personal, tight relationship with him, but something happened along the way. You drifted. Maybe, maybe a storm. Maybe something happened in your life. Maybe something happened to you that did not line up with this word, and you said, you know what? I'm going to try it a different way. But you know, you're sitting here right now listening to me, and you're, you know in your heart that it wasn't God that moved away from you. It's you that moved away from God, and you're ready to come home to him right now. Second group of people I'm going to talk to are those that have never experienced this love of God. You've never even heard God's love talked about like this before. You never knew that he was like a good and perfect father, one like no earthly father could ever be like. And hearing God's love and hearing his word like this has compelled you to make a life-altering decision today to begin to live your life for Jesus. If I have described anybody in this place, I want to give you an opportunity on the count of three to lift your hand and give your life to him. One, two, three, lift them up. It's all right. Give your life to him. Amen, I see your hand. Amen, I see your hand. Amen, I see your hand. Father, I pray that you would begin to work in our lives right now, that you would begin to fill us up with your Holy Spirit, and that we would know, experience, and walk fully in step with what you have for us. You know, with our hands up, I'd love for you to just keep your hands up for just a second because we're all going to pray a prayer together. If this is your prayer, if you can agree with the words I'm about to say, I'd love for you to say them right after me. Let's pray. Dear God, I need you. I need a real relationship with you. Today, I open my life to knowing you. Forgive me for living my life my way. Today I invite Jesus 
to be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I want to know you. I put my trust in you for the things I understand and the things I don't. Today I declare that you are all powerful, all knowing, and always present. You are my God. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for those who gave their life to Jesus today. This is my favorite day of the weekend.